Greetings, everyone. Today, we're going to explore literal equations. So in your notebook, if you're asked to take notes, you'll want to title literal equations. Make sure you have your writing utensil ready to go. Make sure that as you watch this video, if you need to pause or rewind, please do so. So today we're going to talk about solving little literal equations for a given variable using inverse operations. So we're going to continue solving, which is what we've been doing all along. But now what if it's all variables? How do I isolate just one variable? So first, let's just do a quick definition in your notes. So pause if you need to and then press replay. A literal equation is an equation that involves two or more variables. All right, we're gonna work our way through examples. I strongly suggest pausing when needed to jot down the question, playing, and then pausing to write down what else is added. So to start off, let's talk about some basic literal equations, um, formulas that you've probably used in the past. So let's start with area of a rectangle. If I'm talking about the area of a rectangle, you might have referred to it as length and width or possibly base times height. So if I'm talking about the area of a rectangle, the formula I may use would be length times width or base times height. Now what we're going to do with that in this unit is I'm going to ask you to solve for W. So if I have length times width, I want to divide by the length, which leaves me with A area over length equals the width. Now to practice, I would prefer it if you started by using the W and then stating the rest of the equation. It doesn't make a ton of difference now, but it will when we get into inequalities. All right, area of a rectangle, excuse me, a triangle. A triangle, think of it as half of a rectangle. So you might have talked about base times height. So area is half of a base times height, or you might have had a teacher that a base times height divided by two. They mean the same thing. It's just another way to write it. So what if you're asked to solve for B? Well, I'm going to start off with dividing both sides by H. Let's take care of the variables first. And then I have half of B. So to change that, or the inverse operation, would be to times by 2. By doing that, I've isolated the B, and I now have 2A over H, because technically it's 2 over 1. So multiply start across. But to write your final isolation of the variable B for base, please write B first, 2 times area over height. Perimeter of a rectangle. So again, depending if you're talking length width or if you're talking base height, we're talking about the distance around. So you might have perimeter equals two widths plus two lengths if I add them all up, or you might have two bases plus two heights. So what if I ask you to solve for L? Then I'm going to use the width and length. So PEMDAS backwards implies that I need to subtract first. Okay. So what can I add or subtract? Well, I'm currently adding a 2w, so I'm going to minus a 2w. Let me bring this down here. So I'm going to minus the entire term of 2w. That leaves me with a 2l, and I have a p minus 2w. Next, I'm going to multiply or divide. Inverse operation, well, I'm going to divide. So I'm going to write length first, since that's what I isolated. And I'm going to leave it as one big fraction, perimeter minus two widths divided by two. Rectangular prism. Okay, if I'm trying to find the volume here, we have three dimensions we're dealing with. So volume equals length times width times height. If I ask you to solve for H, well, I'm currently multiplying all three. So instead of turning this into two-step, I can complete this in one step. Instead of multiplying by LW, 
I'm going to divide by LW. That means H is now by itself, and I have volume divided by length times width. Circumference. Circumference of a circle is the distance around a circle. So circumference is going to be 2 times pi times r, r being the radius of the circle. So if I want to isolate the r radius, then I'm, instead of multiplying by 2 and pi, I'm going to divide by 2 and pi. I'm going to write r first because that's what I'm isolating, and I now have circumference over 2 pi. Let's talk about some formulas, equations that you will be using, um, not only in math class, but probably in science class as well. So let's start off with density. Density equals mass divided by volume. So if I asked you to solve for m, well, this would be a simple one-step equation. Instead of dividing by v, I'm going to multiply by v. Sorry, my pen's acting up here. There we go. Oh my goodness. All right. Instead of dividing by V, times by V. So M is equal to velocity times density. Let's talk about speed. Speed is equal to distance over time. Think about in any vehicle, right? You have miles per hour d over t. So what if I asked you to solve for d instead of dividing by t? Times by t. Oops, so distance is equal to time times speed. All right, let's talk about one that you might not remember very well, but momentum. You will be dealing with momentum. P stands for momentum. We can't have two m's in an equation. So the m represents mass, and the v is velocity. So if you think you might struggle remembering that, maybe write it out in words. So momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So if I ask you to solve for m, instead of multiplying by v, we would divide by v. So m is equal to momentum divided by velocity. All right, let's talk about acceleration. Acceleration is equal to the change or difference in velocities over time. So in this case, if I asked you to solve for velocity sub 2 is how I could refer to that, or we could say, um, you know, the final velocity value over time. Um, this would be a two-step. So to start off, I need to get rid of this denominator. So instead of dividing by t, I need to times by t. Now remember, this is unique. Because I have a fraction, I have to almost get rid of the fraction first, if that makes sense. Like deal with the denominator first. So currently, if I do that, I have t times a equals velocity sub 2 minus velocity sub 1. Now to isolate, instead of subtracting, I need to add velocity sub 1. That means velocity sub 2 is equal to time times acceleration plus velocity sub 1. Make sure you include any notations that were in the original. All right, let's take a look at an example that is not a formula. This is more of what you're going to be doing this school year in our math class. So you're going to be given just algebraic equations, and you need to solve for a value. In this case, we're going to solve for y. So remember, we're looking at PEMDAS backwards. So what can I add or subtract to the other side first? Well, I have this whole term of positive 8x, so I'm going to minus 8x which leaves me with a 3y and a 48 minus 8x. Then instead of multiplying, we're going to divide everything by 3. So y. Now, 
I'm okay if you leave it as one fraction. I'm okay if you split it up into two separate fractions. Um, depends on what we're trying to use the equation for. Um, but for right now, we'll settle with one whole, one whole fraction. Um, here's another just algebraic equation. And in this case, I'm trying to isolate the A. So if you're a highlighter person, maybe you want to highlight that A where it is and then think about how you're going to move everything away from it. Now, this is a fraction, so it's unique. I need to deal with this denominator first. So instead of dividing by 12, I'm going to times by 12. So I have AB plus 8 equals 12C. See how that tidies things up right away? So if you're given a fraction, try to get rid of it first. Um, again, I'm trying to isolate the A, so next I'm going to minus the 8. So now I'm truly going PEMDAS backwards, which leaves me with AB equals 12C minus 8. And instead of multiplying, I'm going to divide by B. So A is equal to, I'm going to leave this as one big fraction, 12C minus 8 over B. Alrighty, so I know that was a lot of examples, but they're pretty short and we just wanted a lot of ways to reference in case we need help. Um, we wanted to tie in your science class as well, things that you'll see and you'll need to recognize. Um, to see what else you have to do, make sure you check Google Classroom. Were there any assignments that you need to finish? So check out Google Class. Um, any missing work, of course, needs to be a priority, so please take a look. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me or visit with me next class. So until next time, have a good one.